Hello friends, good afternoon. Um, first of all, a very happy International Women's Day to all the women out there. You guys are just wonderful. And secondly, happy Holi to everybody who are celebrating Holi today. On my Instagram page yesterday, I did put up a question and answer asking if you guys have any questions regarding core surgical training program, the route, the pathways, the entry requirements, the portfolio requirements, etc. And actually, I've got received lots of questions which I'm trying to answer today. Okay, so as you can see, that there are tons of questions which I have to answer. So just um, bear with me. The first question that was asked was do I just get a shot at neurosurgery or is it reserved only for those who are from the UK? So neurosurgery, as you might know, is a run through program and it's open to both the UK graduates and international medical graduates. So if you're planning to apply for neurosurgery, it's open for you. Uh, you have to look through the portfolio. The portfolio is completely different requirements as per the neurosurgery pathway, and it's very different from the co-surgical training. So you have to go through the person specification and the requirements. And of course, the competition ratio is pretty high. Next, do you need to go through CST to be able to specialize in ENT and head and neck surgery. Now, of course, depending upon what level of surgical experience do you have back yes. home, if you're starting from F2, then you have to uh, go through core surgical training program. And if you have already done surgery back home or you're already a surgeon back home and you want to pursue specialty training here, then you can apply from ST3 onwards. But yes, you have to go through CST if you are an F2. Uh, the third question that was asked was, how competitive is it to get a gynecological residency in the UK? Now, all the residency program, although it's competitive, but it's very much achievable. Uh, in 2022, the gynecological ratio was 3.72. The number of applicants were 1,042, and the posts which were available were 280. If you look through the other competitive ratios, for example, neurosurgery, cardiothoracic surgery, I think 3.72 is not that difficult. So the next question is, can we get into training even if we did not have any postgraduate qualification to CT1? Now, it's very paramount amount that you must have FI1 and FI2 before you can apply for co-surgical training. If you have done your non-training FY2 either back home or here in the UK, um, then you must have your crest form signed, which is a competency level equivalent to the FY2 here in the UK. And only then you'll be able to apply for core surgical training. I am pursuing MBBS in India. Is it difficult to get through the visa process to get into surgery in the UK? I'm not quite sure what visa process are you referring to here. If you think it's getting difficult to get the visa if you have got a job, so the answer is no. And if you have already got a job, then the UKVI, which is the NHS UKVI visa team, they're gonna give you or sponsor you the visa and then you can apply for the visa and then you can come and start your work. After CST, can you enter cardiothoracics? Now, till 2022, that was the last entry for cardiothoracics at ST3 level. Um, but from this year, cardiothoracics is going to be a run-through program. The only thing that you can apply at ST4 is going to be thoracic surgery. So possibly post-core training, you might have to do one year of non-training CT3 level job. And then you can apply for thoracic surgery in, at ST4 level. So the question was, um, can you please guide the path into the CST? So I've already answered this. The first thing that you've got to do is to finish your FY1, which is the internship equivalent. You've got to finish your FY2 either here in the UK or back home. And then you need to get your crest form signed. Once you have done that, you can apply for course surgical training program straight away. Is it possible to build a portfolio after joining NHS as a non-trainee? I guess it's completely doable. Most of us have built our portfolio while working in the NHS as a non-trainee doctor. And um, I think that's pretty much advisable because while you're here in the UK, you get a lot of opportunities to get things done. For example, audit, which you might not get much opportunities back home. But then yes, of course it's 100% doable. I guess most of the people have done the same. How to apply for CST after training job as FY2? What are the requirements? So the requirement remains the same. If you are doing an FY2 training job, you would have, you don't have to get the crest form signed as a first thing. Second thing, the application remains the same. You have to go through the ordeal and then you have to uh, upload your training FY2 here in the UK and then you have to apply for course surgical training. I will put up the link and then you can go through the link to find out what is the application process, what are the person specification and what are the requirements. But if you wanna check the most important thing, then you can download the 
portfolio matrix and you will know that what are the different columns on the portfolio that carries weightage when you are applying for course surgical training. Where did you do your FY2 training and how did you get the job? So I did my FY2 back home um, and part of my FY2 was here and then I applied for course surgical training program right after that. For those who do a trust grade CST, do they get a CCT or Caesar on completion of ST training? So there are two current pathways. So if you're going to do your all of the surgical training as a non-training doctor, then you're going to get a Caesar. And if you have done a non-training CST, but then wish to apply for ST3 training program, and then you go on to do your training from ST3 to ST8 and become a consultant, then you would get a Caesar CP. What are your views on Truscate CT training for those who did not make CST this year? Um, it's a very dicey question and I think it's dependent on a lot of personal circumstances. If you have done a lot of non-training job back at home and if you have also done a lot of non-training here in the UK and then you wish to continue two more years or maybe one more year of course surgical training as a non-trainee, and then gonna apply for ST3. So the number of years that you have worked post your FY2 you are going to get penalized for a quite a lot of um, portfolio metrics. Okay, so depending on the personal circumstances, if you believe that by waiting one more year, um, you would not waste much time, then I would advise you to apply for course surgical training once again. If you think that you have got enough experience in surgery and then you can build your portfolio in the next one year or maybe two years as, as equivalent to the ST3 level, then I would say good enough and then you can apply for ST3. But it's a very much personal uh, choice for everyone because of the personal circumstances. Is that possible? We can enter CST level after attempting MSRA exam. So from this year, MSRA has become the prime entry point for score surgical training examination. Um, so if you are going to get through the MSRA, you would be invited for the interview. So that's like the first barrier of shortlisting for you, okay? Um, so after you've done your MSRA and if you've got good scores, you don't really enter into course surgical training straight away. Then you have to go through interview and then your portfolio marks would be added. So MSRA is only 10% of the total. The portfolio remains 30% and still the major chunk is your interview, which is 60%. Okay, does working in a surgical speciality makes you overqualified for CST and how you can avoid that? It's a very good question and I get this question quite a lot. So remember, there's an 18 months cutoff while you're working in the surgical department. But what confuses people is, is it 18 months post internship or is, is it 18 months post your FY2? To make it clear once and all, you cannot work in a surgical speciality more than 18 months after your FY2 completion. So if you're here in the UK and if you've done your three rotations, then you don't have to worry anyways. And if you have done some of the surgery, which everybody of us would have done during our internship, all those things do not count towards those 18 months. So your 18 months clock only starts after your FY2. Can you get into CST without much prior experience or working in surgery? Um, it's a very good question again. I would suggest to get some surgical experience before you enter into co surgical training program. If you can do it here in the UK, that would be much more better. If you have some experience back home, wonderful. I would advise you not to breach those 18 months and keep that in mind. And if you still have that time, you can still apply for some non-training in the surgical field so that you might get some experience, get you some hands-on here in the UK. UK, understand the work ethics, understand how surgical specialties are run, understand the entire environment of the theatres and everything, and then get on into the core surgical training. That is going to help you immensely. Can you tell more about the Caesar CP pathway? So I guess I have already answered this question. So the Caesar CP pathway it means that maybe you have done your general surgery back home and then you are going to apply here as an ST3, which is a specialty training. You are going to get Caesar CP pathway. Caesar CP pathway just means that you have done part of your training here in the UK and your part of your training was somewhere else. And that's a Caesar CP pathway. How to get into plastic surgery after MS general surgery in India. So if you have already done your MS general surgery in India, you can apply for ST3's plastic surgery, although it is very competitive, but then if you have all the portfolio requirements, then you can apply straight away into ST3 training pathway. But advisable is to come to the UK, get a non-training job, maybe in plastic surgery, understand how plastic surgery works in the UK, and maybe then apply for plastic training uh, while you're building your portfolio while working in the UK as a non-trainee doctor. Since I'm a general surgeon in India, 
what post should I start my non-training in the UK? So you can apply for as a, maybe a middle grade doctor, which could be a non-training ST3, a non-training registrar. Since you're an MS general surgeon, I guess you would be, um, you would have enough experience in surgery so that you can be a registrar. But if you feel that, or if you feel that maybe a registrar post might be too much burdensome as you start off your non-training job straight away in the UK, they can apply as in between as a middle grade job, which somewhere in between co-surgical training job as an SHO and in between the registrar. Maybe you can jo join as an SHO as a CT3 level, which is almost equivalent to a registrar, but then you are still working as an SHO to get a hang of how the NHS works and maybe then apply maybe in six months time as a registrar if you feel confident enough. Um, themed, unthemed is optional or depends on the place where you get the training post. So after you have been successful in your interviews for co-surgical training, you will get the preferences option. When you are doing your preferences, you would see a lot of themed options in different, in different parts of the country. And it's your choice that if you wanna put them in the priority of order that you wanna look for. For example, you can put through all the orthopedics themed program on the first 10 or the first 20, 25, options and then you can put your second choice which might be general surgery if you do you get or you do not get depends upon the ranking and what the other preferences other people have done who are above your rank is MRCS still a desirable criteria after introduction of MSRA for getting into CST now let's point out two things MSRA is just an entry point requirement MRCS was always a desirable criteria. It's not a must to enter into CST, but if you can get it done before you enter core surgical training, at least part A, it would be wonderful. If not, then you don't have to fret much about it. What's the next step to get into training after FY2? So I've already answered this question. You have to apply for core surgical training if you feel like that. So once you're done your FY2, during your FY2, get your crest form signed, download the person specification, download the portfolio matrix for core surgical training, get through all of the options and the columns that is required for the portfolio which is carries 30 percent and then when the notification comes out in the month of October or late October or early November then you can apply for core surgical training through the OVL website. How can I avoid being overqualified for CST working in surgery more than 18 months? I've already answered that so your 18 months clock period starts after your FY2. So make sure that you do not cross those 18 months because then you will be overqualified for applying for core surgical training. What can I do if I have worked in surgery more than 18 months? So now it depends. For example, if you have done your FY1, which is internship, and if you work for one year in general surgery and a mix of general surgery and acute medicine, now those six months, eight months, or maybe 12 months are not counted towards actual 18 months because you're, that's one more year post your internship is still FY2. And after that, only your clock starts. Should I start CST after FY2 or there are any other training before that? So there is no training after FY2. You can actually apply straight away after FY2, depending upon how confident do you feel entering into a core surgical training pathway. If you feel that you need one more year to groom yourself more surgical oriented, then you can take a non-training job as an FY3 and then always apply next year into the core surgical training. Do I have to enroll into FY1 or directly to into FY2 for CST? Depends, if you've done your internship back home, then you can apply for FY2 non-training or FY3 non-training program and then co-surgical training. Or if you have not done your internship, then you can apply for foundation year two years training program and then you can apply for co-surgical training. Is it possible to convert the Indian logbook while practicing there to the UK pan-surgical one? Now, I uh, I would need more information what you actually want to ask from this question. But whatever I have understood, if you have done some surgeries back home and if you have got a logbook and if you want to convert it into the UK, you can start doing so right away. There is a free website called the Surgical e-logbook. If you type this in Google, you will get that. And then you can always put all of your logs of your surgery into directly there. Get signed by your consultant before you come to the UK with the stamp and with the date and with the home registration number. And then you can always put through for the core surgical training and that would be accepted. So I guess I've already answered a lot of questions um, and I've gone through uh, quite a lot of other questions as well. And they're more or less similar to the already questions that I've already answered. <laughs>